Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Okay, this time we're going through uh, issue 3, which is about globalization. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about how the world has become increasingly connected okay, to one another. Okay, so much so that we're actually going to explore beyond Singapore uh, to essentially what uh, matters actually concern the entire world at large. Now, in this topic, okay, it's very, very easy. Okay, it is really talking about what are the drying forces, okay, of globalization, okay? So, what is globalization? First things first, okay, this chapter, I can assure you, okay, there is really only one major concept you need to understand, which is this particular slide, okay? Two words, interconnection, interdependence, okay? I repeat again, uh, two words you need to know, interconnection, interdependence, okay? As long as you know these two words, okay, most of the time, your SRQ will be able to answer with no problem, okay? First, globalization is a process by which the countries become interconnected because of exchange of ideas and activities of people. So when people go all around the world, okay, and, and they meet one another, they share with one another, they buy things from one another, that is interconnection, okay? And because of that, historically, globalization has been based on trade. Okay, and therefore we actually have economic interconnection with one another. Okay, and this economic interconnection can lead to interdependence. That being said, you depend on me, I depend on you. Okay, so globalization leads to inter yeah, sorry, globalization leads to interconnections. Okay, which leads to economic specifically economic interconnections, which therefore leads to some countries having this economic interdependency on one another. That gives rise to what we call the supply chain. Okay, so uh, it goes from the raw materials to the supplier to the manufacturer, distributor, retailer, and finally to us. Okay, the consumer and the consumer drives across the de demand. Okay, now these each of these uh, phases. Okay, or each of these stakeholders can be in the same country or they can be in a completely different country. So you can source okay, the raw materials from one place, supplier in another place, the guy that brings everything together and manufactures it is in a, another country. The, the, the delivery company is a MNC, for example, like FedEx or, or DHS, okay? Sorry, DHL, not DHS, okay? Uh, and then retailer, of course, uh, being uh, wherever you buy your stuff from, okay? So what happens if the supply chain gets disrupted so any one point okay it gets cut okay the entire supply chain gets affected and that is what we call interdependence okay so what then uh, after we understand the general principle of globalization what then are our driving forces okay there are three main driving forces the first one we're talking about advancements in transportation technology okay so this is the causeway. Uh, I think we're all very familiar with it, right? Um, this is a map of Scoot, okay, and where Singapore Airlines flies, right? And this is a map of uh, all the global uh, shipping routes in the world today. The idea that I'm trying to cover here is with all this infrastructure, with development in aircraft, with development in container ships, we are now able to cover a lot more distance at faster speed. Okay, in the past, it used to take about three months or so, more than three months to reach uh, London from Singapore, right? Today, it is maybe a 13-hour flight. So we are able to carry more things to get to different places in a much more faster and efficient manner. Okay, and that also essentially allows for more people, okay, more people and more goods, okay, to be exchanged all around the world. And if you remember what I said just now, more exchange means... More interconnection. More interconnection means more interdependence. Globalization, that's it. Okay? So one of the examples you can use is containerization, which is essentially the big container ships. Okay? So every country in the world uses the same uh, dimension of container. Okay? And that has made it so that every port in the world is able to load and unload the same type of container very, very quickly. Okay? And that, again, reduces any... Uh, labor cost or reduces the speed that or rather reduces the time taken again okay, for ships to be in port yeah so uh, speeding up the movement of larger volumes resulting in lower transport cost so this last part this last bullet point is the one that you need to remember 
when goods, services, and people can be moved around the world more quickly and at lower cost, it increases okay, the exchange of ideas and goods. And that is what we call greater interconnectedness. Okay, so this last bullet point is essentially what you need to explain to me in your SRQ when you're talking about driving forces. Okay, so like I said, it always goes back to what globalization is, okay, for this chapter. Okay, so these are just some examples. So versus uh, the old Liverpool Manchester Railway versus today's uh, Shinkansen bullet trains. Same thing, steam powered ship versus your container ships. And of course, uh, today we can fly anywhere in the world, okay, for not super expensive, okay, because of low cost airlines and stuff like that. Okay, the second driving force is what we call uh, advancements in digital technology. Okay, so, uh, you know, we have come a very long way in terms of how we communicate with one another. Okay, so in the really, really old ancient times, it could be plumes or smoke. Okay, uh, thereafter, uh, you might send letters, okay, to people all over the world. Okay, thereafter, some people develop uh, your telegraphs, okay, and, and things like that. And today, we have the modern smartphone. Okay, so with the smartphone and indeed with the internet, Okay, there has been an exponential rise in the exchange of information. Okay, so what this means is essentially today, anywhere, anyone, anytime, okay, can get information that they need, okay, and believe in it and, and be able to absorb it. While in the past, there was no way to do this. The only way was to go to a library and really look at the information that I want. And sometimes the library might not even have that resource that you need it might be in some other country okay so today that has no longer been a problem and so now people today are able to exchange ideas exchange information all across the world in record speed almost instantaneously okay that's why we use the three a's acronym to describe this process instant access from anywhere by anyone at any time that's why we call this the age of information Okay. So uh, again, it has allowed uh, us to keep in touch, it has allowed us to address causes, it has allowed us to keep abreast of the news in all over the world. Okay, And so, because of this, okay, again, the second bullet point there is something you need to memorize. Okay, Improvement of technology has led to greater access and greater access facilitates the communication and the exchange of information, causing the world to be interconnected. Okay, so... Uh, if in a case where they ask you for negatives, okay, this is very simple. I think you are all very familiar. Technological advancements can also create divisions. Why? Because we are pitting people with very, very different perspectives on the world together. And that sure fire away uh, gives rise to uh, tension, okay? And it's internation tension, international tension, to, to, to say the least, okay? Sometimes it can also be about the digital divide, which is um, even though this is the age of information, some people who do not have access to digitalization and uh, the internet may be left out okay, of this uh, information boom. And that information gap gets wider and wider and wider the more communication technology actually develops. Okay, And the last driving force you need to know is multinational corporations or MNCs. Okay, why is this so? Simply because MNCs by its nature belong to different countries. So this company has operations in many different countries, okay, and that itself is already an interconnectedness, right? Because one branch must link to another branch and they all must link back to the HQ somewhere and these are all in different countries. Okay, so that itself is already an economic interconnection. And because they're all part of the same company and they take the same... Uh, you know, they need the same kind of resources to, to run, okay, so they also form interdependency, okay, so there is the globalization aspect in it, that's why it's called a driving force, because it immediately, by its nature, it is already an interconnected and interdependent relationship being set up, okay, so local MNCs, foreign MNCs, okay, doesn't matter, MNCs have all uh, contributed to this process, and indeed, Many countries have benefited from NNCs uh, in terms of the employment they get, okay, and the competitiveness they have. 
Okay, so indeed, okay, like we also mentioned before, exchange of ideas happens quickly with, um, say, local institutions. So MNCs can work uh, with uh, people in the own country, the host country, okay, to develop things that perhaps are unique, okay, to their region or to their nation. Okay, and that allows them to have an interdependent relationship as well because uh, oftentimes the MNCs and these locals, okay, they rely on one another uh, to for what they bring to the table. Perhaps it is the local knowledge or perhaps it's the resources that they can get. Okay, and so this global nature of MNCs are actually the ones driving the increasing economic interconnections uh, across the world. Okay, so Starbucks is a very good example of this. You can see they source their coffee beans, their paper, their sugar from all around the world and they sell it to you everywhere you can find Starbucks. Okay, so how do the rest of the driving forces link? Definitely they do because MNC's business activities are reliant on communications and transportation being reliable. Imagine you cannot communicate between one branch in one country, another branch in another country. Suddenly, there's a communication shutdown. Something bad will happen. You will lose a lot of money. Okay, so all these three driving forces work together and make the world more and more globalized as we know it. Okay, so like I said, this is a very, very simple unit. Okay, if this comes up for your O levels, okay, you should be very, very happy about it. Okay. Remember, all you need to memorize is how each driving force links to the definition of globalization, which has got to do with simply economic interconnections and therefore causing interdependency. Okay, that's all you need to memorize for this unit. Okay, so yeah, uh, I'm continuing to upload the rest of the lecture videos. Okay, so keep on your revision work and yeah, I will see you guys in the next lecture. Okay, which we will talk about the specific impacts of globalization. Okay, study hard. All right, I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Bye bye.